This video will discuss both the federal and state funding for basic education for adult providers here in Washington State. The Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act is landmark legislation that is designed to strengthen and improve our nation's public workforce system and help get Americans, including youth and those with significant barriers to employment, into high-quality jobs and careers and help employers hire and retain skilled workers. WIOA brings together in strategic coordination the core programs of federal investment in skill development. Those core programs include employment and training services for adults, dislocated workers, and youth and Wagner Pizer Employment Services administered by the U.S. Department of Labor, DOL, through formula grants to states and adult education and family literacy programs as well as state vocational rehabilitation services programs that assist eligible individuals with disabilities in obtaining employment. Both core programs are administered by the U.S. Department of Education, in addition to federal Title II WIOA dollars. Our community-based organizations and colleges have additional non-federal funds that support their basic education for adults programming. The Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, or WIOA, funds that we receive to serve Washington State's basic skills populations who are on defined college and career pathways are allocated to the state based on the demographics of the target population in our state. The funding formula is based on those individuals in Washington who are 18 plus years of age with no high school credential. In Washington, that's over 622,000 individuals. Those individuals with limited ability to speak English, nearly 450,000 individuals in our state, and the number of individuals living below 175% of poverty, nearly 600,000 Washingtonians. In 2020-2021 program year, Washington State received 11,626,853 federal Title II dollars to fund basic education for adults. WIOA legislation provides the following criteria for the use of WIOA Title II federal funds. At the state level, each eligibility agency receiving Title II funds must use at least 82.5% of the funds to provide awards to eligible providers and no more than 12.5% to carry out state leadership activities, such as technical assistance, monitoring, and evaluation. The local providers are then required to use at least 95% of the funds to carry out allowable adult education and literacy activities and can use the remaining 5% for activities such as planning administration, and professional development. We will first take a look at how college basic education for adults programs are funded. Adult Basic Education, or ABE, Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education, or IELCE, and Leadership Block Grants make up the federal Title II WIOA funds awarded to college providers. These include federal Title II WIOA funds awarded to college providers, through the following grants, ABE Master Grants, federal funds. These can only fund approved basic skills activities as outlined in the grant guidelines and WIOA. Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education Grants, IELCE, federal funds, must be used in combination with Integrated Education and Training, IET programming as outlined in the grant guidelines, and Leadership Block Grants, which support activities and costs associated with attending State Board for Community and Technical Colleges, BEDA, required or sponsoring training and activities. Colleges then spend additional state dollars to expand and enhance programming, meet the required state match per federal requirements, maintain the same level of maintenance of effort as the previous year to avoid supplanting. We'll now take a look at how the community and technical college system allocates state funds to college basic education for adults programs. On July 1, 2016, the new community and technical college allocation model for state funds went into effect. This was and continues to be a critical change that should very positively affect basic skills. For college providers, the new allocation model determines a college or district's base enrollment allocations 
for state dollars. Allocations are adjusted annually based on the comparison of the three-year average of actual enrollments to the three-year average enrollment target. The new allocation model determines the Minimum Operating Allocation, or MOA. All colleges receive a base allocation of $2.85 million annually. The formula then allocates 5% of state dollars to colleges based on performance and their share for Student Achievement Initiative, or SAI, data. The allocation model also weights priority enrollments by 30%. Programming receiving weighted enrollments include all basic education for adults enrollments, all applied baccalaureate programs, STEM courses designed for STEM majors or transfers, and workforce high-demand courses identified as contributing to degrees needed to meet skill gaps identified in the Joint Study on a Skilled and Educated Workforce. This means an approximately $790 per full-time equivalent enrollment, or FTE, increase of basic skills enrollments, changing the basic FTE rate of $2,635 to the new allocation of $3,425 per FTE. We are now going to turn our attention to federal funding for community-based organizations, like the federal Title II funds awarded to colleges. Grants for community-based organizations include Master Grants, Federal Funds. These funds can only fund approved basic skill activities, as outlined in the Grant Guidelines and WFOIA. Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education Grants, IELCE Federal Funds, must be used in combination with Integrated Education and Training, IET, programming, as outlined in the Grant Guidelines, and Leadership block grants support activities and costs associated with attending State Board for Community and Technical Colleges, BETA, required or sponsoring trainings and activities. Washington's Title II funded community based organizations also receive state funds from the State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. Community based organizations' state grant funds are earmarked funds that must be used on allowable basic skills activities. The CBO state grant funds prior to 2018 were called the ABE Enrollment Money. These funds are awarded through a grant process to community-based organizations for adult basic education enrollments. These funds were appropriated to the colleges by the legislature many years ago from the college's state funds. CBO state funds are awarded annually based on the following formula. 91% of FY20 funding is distributed based on a pro rata share of previous year's annualized beta full-time equivalent enrollment. The remaining 9% of FY20 funding is split 50% on a pro rata share of previous year's SAI points and 50% on pro rata share of previous year's Student Achievement Initiative, or SAI points per students. Community-based organizations also fund basic skills activities with additional non-federal dollars dedicated to enhanced programming and the federally required maintenance of effort. This table details beta funding over six years to provide a historical context. The first two rows of the table compare system-level funding for Master Grant or Adult Basic Education Funds and EL Civics, now IELCE funds. The final row displays non-federal funds reported as maintenance of effort submitted on providers' federal finance reports, or FFRs. This table details comparison funding over six years, giving you a historical view of funding in all of the community and technical college systems, mission areas, academic transfer, basic skill, per college or developmental education, and vocational or what you may think of as workforce. Please explore the additional resources available in the resources section of this Canvas module for more information on the provider funding. Of particular relevance to this video are the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, the Joint Study on a Skilled Workforce, and the BETA WIOA State Plan.